Today will be part 65 in the series, Scriptures Often Ignored, and today we're going to be focusing on the restored timeline of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Messiah and why this is so important. And this video is also very important indeed because it's going to restore truth and the enemy has been trying to hide this for a very long time, but now the truth will be restored and revealed to you today. And because this is a truth network, we use the restored names of the Father, Yahuwah, and the restored name of the Son, Yahusha, read from right to left in the Paleo-Hebrew, as you can see right here. We also use the restored title for our Father, Alua, which means Almighty One, Almighty Yahuwah, singular, according to Deuteronomy 6.4 and Strong's H433. Now to get a proper understanding of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Messiah, Yahusha, we first have to get an understanding of what the text actually says and compare it to the Greek and see if there is an agenda behind all this indeed and see exactly what they're hiding. Now what we're going to focus on is the phrase first day of the week or first yum of the week. And interestingly enough, you only see this phrase eight times in the what's commonly known as the New Testament, and we're going to see exactly where those places are and what it actually says, because many like to see this and like to say, oh, well, it says first day of the week, so that means the Messiah was resurrected on Sunday, doesn't it? Even though the word Sunday is absolutely nowhere in this text whatsoever, but we're going to see exactly what it says, and we're going to be quoting from the KJV where it says in Matthew 20. 28 verse 1 where it says in the end of the sabbath as it began the dawn toward the first day of the week a mary magdalene and the other mary to see the sepulcher now the reason that this word is like this is because the word day is italicized in the masoretic text what that means is it was an addition and the translators actually added this word to the text it's an addition on purpose so that's why I'm going to be putting this in brackets because in the original text, this word is not here whatsoever. That's why they had to italicize it, but we'll be talking more about that later on to come. The other two occurrences that you see this phrase right here is in Mark 16, verse 2 and verse 9, but we'll go over verse 1 for context too, where it says, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. Now when he was risen early the first day of the week, we see it again right here in verse 9, and that he is of course talking about Yahusha, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. The fourth occurrence is in Luke chapter 24, verses 1, where it says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And then Yaukanan, John chapter 20, verses 1 and verse 19, we see it twice there. Verse 1 says, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. And then verse 19, Then the same day at evening being the first day of the week. Now that's what they want us to believe. And then the other two occurrences that we see it is in the book of Acts and the book of 1 Corinthians. Acts chapter 20 verses 7 says, and upon the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, of course this is according to the KJV, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And then 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 through 2. Now concerning the collection of the Kadashim, as I have given order to the assemblies of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store. Now this is what your KJV says. Now let's actually go to the text and analyze what the text actually says by going to the actual Greek to see if there's an agenda and if there's a cover up here because they like to give us the phrase, oh, first day of the week to justify the Messiah being resurrected on a Sunday, but is this actually true and does this agree with the text and could there have been some adding and taking away from the beast known as the Roman Catholic Church? Let's find out. Now once again, here we are using the text analysis to actually look at the Greek and we're going to be looking at each of these passages to really get a better understanding of what they actually say. Now once again, we're here in Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, verse 1. And as you can see right here, the word that is used for the Sabbath actually is Sabbaton 
from the Greek right here, or G4521. But do you see something that's very interesting and suspicious indeed about this? I do, because you see right here the word Sabbath is used in this passage, or Shabbat, the seventh day of rest, but then there's the same word is actually used here, down here. You see it's the same exact word, same exact word, but now it all of a sudden means week? How did it go from Sabbath to week all of a sudden? One of them is correct, and we're going to be talking more about that, because here we are here at Luke 24, verse 1, where it says, Miaton Sabaton, and we're going to be talking about that phrase, Miaton Sabaton, and what it actually means, because no, it does not mean first day of the week, and note how they even have right here the word day in brackets, because they know that that word was purposefully added into the text for an agenda indeed, because they don't want you to know the truth. You see it here in Mark 16, verses 2. Mia Tan Sabaton, G1520 for Mia, G3588 for Tan, and then G4521 for Sabaton, which actually means Sabbath, but yet they have it meaning week for some reason in these passages. And then we also have two, Mark 16, verses 9. We have right here, Sabaton of the week, but really it means Sabbath. We're going to keep going to Yaukanan, John 20, verse 1. We see that phrase again, Miatan Sabaton. And we also see it right here too in Yaukanan, John 20, verse 19. Now here we actually see Mia Sabaton right there. And we're going to be talking and breaking down those words in the Greek. And we see it here too in Acts chapter 20, verse 7, Miatan Sabaton. And also 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2, where we have Mian Sabatu. Like I said, we're going to break down the Greek together to get a better understanding to see exactly what this text means and what it's actually saying. And we're going to break down each of these words. Again, the phrase, miatan sabaton, and if it actually means first day of the week, or if it actually means something else. Now you can see right here, they give you the Strong's Greek definition, G1520, and we're going to break each one of these down. We're going to start with mia right here. So if you click this right here, or G1520, this is what you'll get. You'll get the word heis. So we see right here the word mia actually is the feminine form in the Greek to mean the word one, and it just means the word one as the definition right here. You see that it's a primary number, and you see all of the passages that it's in. It occurs 345 times throughout scripture, and if we keep going down, you see that it's a cardinal number one. It's used universally as opposed to many, and it's also added to nouns after the manner of an adjective. But I really wanted to keep our focus and attention on how it's a cardinal number and why that's so important. Now here's just a brief overview of cardinal versus ordinal if you don't already know, but the word cardinal numbers really means just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and etc. But the ordinal form of numbers indicates the order of the numbers. So for example, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, six, and etc. Those are what you call ordinal numbers. We see that the cardinal form of Mia actually means one right here. It's a cardinal number and it means one. It does not mean first. These are two totally different words. There is a difference between one and first because it's cardinal versus ordinal. And if you actually take a look at Mia right here, which we just saw earlier in Strong's G1520, you see that it means one right here. And all of these occurrences that it occurs 35 times in scripture, you see that it means one right here in Matthew 5.18, in Matthew 19.6, Matthew 24.41. In every single definition, it means the word one right here, as you see. But when you go to the places that it talks about the resurrection of our Messiah, then all of a sudden it means first. It goes from one to first. How can that be? Is there an agenda going on here? Because we see exactly what they're doing. Just like in all of these places in the book of Luke, we see that it means one, one, 
1, 1. But then when we get to Luke 24, verse 1, which is one of the places of Yahusha's resurrection, it all of a sudden changes from 1 to 1. And if we keep going, we see the same thing in Yahukanon John 10, 16. It means 1. But now all of a sudden, it means 1. What are they doing? Same with here in verse 19. But then even in the book of Acts, it means 1 right here. But then in other places, talking about and concerning when it comes to the first day of the week, that phrase, it now all of a sudden sudden means first what are they trying to hide and like we just discovered and prayerfully this is making more sense the mia which is the feminine cardinal number to mean one in greek means one cardinal however the number that means first as actually the Greek word that means protos or prote right here. These are two separate words and two separate definitions. And ironically enough too, there's actually a word that means first that's used in scripture and it comes from G4413, which is protos and occurs a hundred times in the New Testament as it's commonly known. And as you can see, it's an adjective and it means protos first, as we just saw in the number chart earlier ago, which means first or before, and you can see that it means first, first here in some passages in the Mathath Yahu or Matthew chapter 10 verses 2 and Matthew 12 45 and Matthew 19 verse 30 because this is the ordinal form. So my question is if this word actually means first and is the ordinal meaning of the word first, this is the word that should be in those passages to mean first day of the week. But we see that the cardinal form one is used. So in a nutshell, what this is trying to show you and what we're trying to show you here is that this word right here, Mia, should actually be the word one. It should not be first. That is an improper translation. It should be the word one, just as we've shown you right here, where it actually means in these passages, Mia, you can actually see that it means one only with the exception in the text where it comes to and talks about the resurrection of Yahusha and uses that phrase first day of the week, which is erroneously used. So going back to our phraseology then, when it comes to Mia Tan Sabaton and breaking this down, we see that the word Mia actually means one and not first. So now we're going to cover the second one, which is the Tan or the G3588. Now this word right here is actually a definite article in the Greek and it means the word the right here as you can see just like the word the definition the and it has other definitions too but it means the word the so they have that part correct. And then the final word of the phrase is sabaton or G4521, which right here in Strong's, they even tell you what it means. It actually means the Sabbath or i.e. the seventh day of the week, the Sabbath a week, the Sabbath a week as the definition from Hebrew origin Shabbat, which means Sabbath or day of rest. And you see in throughout the 68 occurrences, it actually means Sabbath. Now, when we go through all of these occurrences, we start to see something once again, very interesting and suspicious indeed, just like we saw with the word Mia, because we have right here, G4521, Sabaton right there, 68 occurrences. And in all of these occurrences, with the exception of a few, it correctly uses the word Sabbath right here in all of these translations, as we see in Matthew, Matthew chapter 12, verses 1, Matthew 12, 2, Matthew 12, 5, we see the word Sabbath, Sabbath, and I'm just going to scroll down even faster, Sabbath. We see the word Sabbath here all throughout Matthew chapter 12, and it keeps going, it keeps going. You see the word Sabbath in Matthew 24, but look what happens when we get to Matthew 28 when it comes to and concerning the resurrection of our Messiah. It still says Sabbath right here, but what happens when you go down? Now all of a sudden it says first day of the week, but all the other ones say Sabbath. What is really going on here? And the same same goes for the book of Mark 2. We have the word Sabbath in all of these different places. Sabbath right here, and I'll be sure to leave this in the description box below so you can see with both your eyes open how these wicked translators have translated everything and how they've messed everything up and trying to justify Sunday sun worship lawlessness. Because per our preliminary verses, we just read Mark chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, and we have right here in verse 1 the word Sabbath right there. Okay, but keep going to verse 2, and now it's the word week. What happened to the word Sabbath, just like in all the other occurrences? Same with verse 9. What happened to the word Sabbath? Where is it? Because you see it in all these other locations. 
but you don't see it in those strategic locations. Why is that the case? And we're still scrolling through the book of Luke right here. You see the word Sabbath all over it in the occurrences. Luke 13, you see the word Sabbath right here. Luke 13, we keep going. You see the word Sabbath. You get to Luke 14, 1. It still says Sabbath right there. All of it says Sabbath except a few places. Now all of a sudden it says week. What is going on here? And then when we actually get to Luke 24, verse 1, talking about the resurrection of our Messiah, now all of a sudden it says day of the week. And we're going to keep going so you can see for yourself with both your eyes open exactly what's going on and get a better understanding. But you see in the book of Yaukanan, book of John, it says Sabbath in all of these locations right here, except the ones that we just pointed out. It still says Sabbath. It still says Sabbath. But then when you go to John 20, verse 1, it all of a sudden says the word week. And also in verse 19, the only time you see that word there and properly placed there is when it comes to the resurrection of our Messiah because is there an agenda behind all this? And just as we showed you here, and just as we highlighted it here, we see the same exact word in Matthew 28, verse 1. The same word is used twice in this one verse, but one time it correctly translates to Sabbath, but then another time it translates to week. But it's the exact same word used. What is going on here? Why is all of this so important? Because they do not want you to know that our Messiah, Yahusha, was resurrected on the Sabbath. He was resurrected on the Shabbat, not the first day of the week. He was not resurrected on no Sunday. That is a lie, and that is propagated by the Roman Catholic Church, as I'm going to show you later on. We know this too because scripture even tells us also that Yahusha, our Messiah, is sovereign of the Shabbat in Matthew 12 verses 8. So if that's the case, we know that he was resurrected on the Sabbath of Shabbat and we know it agrees with scripture and the rest of the Torah because he's also the living word, the Thura, the Torah made flesh, the word made flesh. And also in the Greek too, you actually see a word that means day in the Greek, which is Himera. This word means day and it's used used 390 times in the so-called New Testament, the word day right here. So this is the word that's used for day, not the other one. And you can see that this is from G2250, Himera, which means day. However, when we look back at these passages, when we look at the preliminary passages where it erroneously uses the word day and inserts it on purpose, you don't even see the word Himera. You don't even see G2250. That word is absolutely nowhere. The same goes here in this phrase here too. The word day, which means Himera in the Greek, G2250, you see that absolutely nowhere over here. And the same is true for Mark 16, verse 2. There's no word Himera anywhere whatsoever. G2250 is nowhere whatsoever. Same with Mark 16, verse 9 right here. With the word day there, it's not there. We do not see it either here for the John 20, verse 1. It's again, Miatan Sabaton, but that word day is not there and same for verse 19 also when we look at it here too and also in case you're wondering why it says week right there there's actually a greek word for the word week now although i'm not an expert in greek i do know that the word for week though in greek means evdomada right here this is the word that properly means week, not sabaton. The word sabaton in scripture means Sabbath, and that's the Greek word for the word Sabbath, as we've just proven right here. It means Sabbath. So as we've just shown you here, the word sabaton right here in the Greek properly means Sabbath or properly means week. So when we piece all of this together, this is why this is so important. And when we have the restored version, when we piece everything together, the Miaton Sabbaton, it actually means this, one of the Sabbaths, one of the Shabbats. So when we actually read it in the restored version, it says here in Matthew 28, verse 1, Moreover, late on Shabbat, as it began to dawn, to one of the Shabbats came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. Then we have two, 
Mark chapter 16 verses 1 through 2 and verse 9 using the restored version and not the twisted KJV with an agenda in mind. Verse 1 says, And when the Shabbat or Sabbath was passed, Mariam from Magdala and Mariam the mother of Ya'ukub or James and Shaluma Salome bought spices to go and anoint him, Ya'usha. And very early on one of the Shabbats, Miatan Sabbaton, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. So what? Mia means one. Tan is the. So one the or one of the. And then Sabbaton Shabbats. Verse 9 should properly say, And having risen early on one of the Shabbats, he, Yahusha, appeared first to Mariam from Magdala, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Luke 24, verse 1. And on one of the Shabbats at early dawn, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. But of course, we know that Yahusha had already risen because he was resurrected on the Shabbat. Let's keep going. Yahukanan, John chapter 20, verses 1. One and verse 19. And on one of the Shabbats, Mariam from Magdala came early to the tomb while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. When therefore it was evening on that day, this is verse 19, one of the Shabbats, and then Acts 20 verse 7 that says, and on one of the Shabbats, this is what it actually says, the taught ones having gathered together to break bread, Sha'ul, intending to depart the next day, was reasoning with them and was extending the word till midnight and then also in first corinthians 2 and concerning the collections for the kadash are made apart ones you are to do as i gave orders to the assemblies of galatia on one of the Shabbats, let each one of you place aside, storing up whatever he is prosperous, so that there are no collections when I come. It's time to wake up and get out of the delusion of the KJV and the delusion that, oh, the KJV is the most proper translated word of G-O-D. No, it is not. Because there is an agenda in mind. By who? By the beast that would think to do what? To change times and laws? Oh my goodness. And we see exactly who's doing that and who's responsible for that. Because who gave the authority to the Roman Catholic Church to change different things? Now who substituted Sunday for the Shabbat? Who did this? Who is responsible for this? This page appears in the Catholic publication, quote, The Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine. And we're going to be looking more about at that and I've covered this more in many of my videos from last year talking about what's wrong with Sunday Sun worship and we're going to be talking more about that but question what is the third commandment the third commandment is remember that thou keep uh, Kadash the Sabbath day and actually this is not even the third commandment they changed that too the third commandment is not to take the name of our father in vain. The Shabbat is the fourth commandment, but you're going to see how they change that too, adding and taking away. And they tell you when the Shabbat is, the seventh day. So then it says, why do they observe Sunday instead of the actual Shabbat? They say we observe Sunday instead because what? Because the Catholic Church transferred it from the Shabbat to the Sunday. So you see that they're responsible for it and they even admit to doing it. They say that the church substituted Sunday for it because they claim that the Messiah rose from the dead on a Sunday and they claim even though we've just proven with scripture itself, with the Greek itself, we've just proven that actually he was resurrected when? On the Shabbat, just as scripture agrees with. And then it says, by what authority did they do this? The church itself substituted this. And when you know what that word actually means, it means what? It means Circe is what it means. It's a pagan deity. And what is the third commandment? Command? It says, commands us to sanctify Sunday as the day, then us as in the Roman Catholic Church, what are they talking about? So they fully admit the establishment of Sunday is their act and by changing laws and times. We've even gone over this too from the Catholic Church Council in Laodicea or the Laodicean Creed in 364 AD, Canon 29, and you can even see the quote right here, quote, Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on the Shabbat, but shall work on that day. But what they claim is the L-O-R-D's day, they shall especially H-O-N-O-R or esteem and as being action shall, if possible, do no work on that day. On L-O-R-D's day, 
if you look up this word in the Hebrew, it means what? Baal, the day of Baal. Interesting and suspicious indeed. And then it says, if however they are found Judaizing, they shall be shut out from what they call Christ. And we've also gone over the Roman Catholic Church and all of their heresies and heretics because anyone who was caught esteeming the correct Shabbat and anyone kept keeping the Torah or anyone that was caught keeping the Torah, they had to be killed under the authority of the Roman Catholic Church. And we went over all of the different torturing methods that were used back then during this time. Oh, what difference language makes indeed. Oh, the language does matter indeed. I'm telling you, it's time to stop buying these KJV versions and all these twisted versions and only going by what they say, but not really looking into them and seeing exactly what's hidden in them. Because like we just went over, it's the same word used right here for sabaton. That means Sabbath. One of them is correct. The other one is a bogus translation as we just exposed. And then once again, we have more adding and taking away of the RCC right here and their catechisms, which we're looking at in the Ten Commandments alone. And I've gone over this plenty of times before to show you and prove and expose to you how they've changed and added and taken away commandments. We see right here the commandments that one of them that they took away actually is the one that has to do with what? No graven images. They took that commandment out from their formula right here. You don't even see see that commandment because that commandment is the second one but it's not even here this is actually the third one but they made it the second one and the one that's supposed to be the Shabbat or the Sabbath is the fourth commandment but yet they've made that the third commandment and notice how they don't even say the word Sabbath here but they say L-O-R-D which is who? Baal and that's why words are so important that's why names are so important Okay, so we see how the numbers have been misconstrued altogether because this should really be the third commandment. This should really be the fourth commandment and it should say the Shabbat or the Sabbath, which they also change. We see that all of this has been changed too just by the ordering and the numbers. And then this one right here, they added two of them because they took away one, which is the no graven images. They had to take that one out and they added two of the thou shalt not covet because thou shalt not covet is the 10th one, just one not two. Here are more catechisms of the RCC that we're going to be talking about and exposing. We're not going to go over all of them. Like I said, I've gone over this in the past before, and I'll be sure to leave those videos and links in the description box below. You can also take a look at my playlist, Be Deceived No More, so you can be deceived no more. I'm telling you, this goes much deeper than you think. And it also talks about the Sabbath and some of their actions that they did. They also talk about LORD's day right here. But then the RCC says that Sunday, is the fulfillment of the Sabbath. Since when did it change from the Sabbath being the Sabbath, the seventh day of rest, to Sunday, the first day of the week? Since when did that change? Who gave that authority? Last I checked, the word says that our father, Yahuwah, he does not change. Yahusha is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So who's making these changes? And so we see exactly who's doing it, adding and taking away, and then trying to convince everyone that, oh, because it's been fulfilled on the Sunday, which it actually has not, that, oh, now people can believe that the Messiah was resurrected on Sunday when he was not, and justify the pagan day of Easter, because yes, Easter is pagan too. And you see right here how the catechisms of the RCC, how they're responsible for all of this replacement theology, how they're responsible for all of these changes and trying to do what? The strong delusion. That is exactly what they're doing. And we see exactly the plot and scheme. And we also see how the translators with the KJV and all those other ones are also involved with such a scheme. So now that we have the restored version and now that we understand exactly what it says, now that we've properly translated it from the Greek to the English to what it should say in the English, now we can get a better understanding of the timeline of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Messiah and really see the full truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth of the restored timeline. And the reason this is so important is because you're probably wondering, well, how can this help us get an understanding of the actual timeline? timeline of the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahusha. We see right here the phrase is one of the Shabbats. Why is that so important? And why is it important that this word is plural here? Because was there two Shabbats observed that week? 
Now here is a more accurate timeline of the breakdown of the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahusha. Now of course we're all still learning and we're all still getting more understanding of course. But the reason it says in the correct restored translations on one of the Shabbats, plural, the reason it says that Miatan Sabbaton is because back then the first day of unleavened bread during the time of Yahusha was observed as a Shabbat on 115 or the 15th day of Abib. But it's important to also understand that although this was treated as a Shabbat and called the Shabbat here in text and scripture as we saw, this was not during the weekly Shabbat. This Shabbat right here that's talked about in scripture is separate from the weekly regular seven day Shabbat count. So when it says one of the Shabbats in the scripture and in the verses that we've talked about, it's not talking about this Sabbath right here. It's not talking about this Shabbat right here, contrary to what Judaism wants you to believe. It's actually talking about this weekly regular Shabbat that's right here. Because during the week of unleavened bread this week and during the week of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Messiah, Yahusha, there were two Shabbats, two Sabbaths observed. The first one was on the 15th day right here, or 115, which is also the first day of unleavened bread. This is when unleavened bread starts, according to the command and according to Torah in Leviticus chapter 23. This is the first day of the high Sabbath, as it's called. And then we have the regular Sabbath right here, that was observed on the 18th day, which is the seventh day Shabbat. So when we put it all together, we see exactly how it all lines up. We see, we know that the Passover or Pesach is Yahusha is when he died actually because he is our Passover lamb. So we know that he died on Passover. We know that he died on Passover afternoon. He was arrested and brought before the high priest Caiaphas and then the cock crowed and then led to Pilate. And then afterwards, he died on that Passover and then had to be buried in the tomb because just like the command says, he has to be buried before the sun goes down, before the next day. And then we also have the account of the three days and the three nights in the tomb where he was because just like he says that three days and three nights, he would be where in the heart of the arts, in the heart of the earth. And he gives the sign of the prophet Yauna or the prophet Jonah. And when we look at this more clearly, we have the three days and the three nights right here during unleavened bread on the 15th, the 16th, and the 17th, the three days right here, and the three nights right here. And then on the regular Sabbath, the actual Sabbath, the seventh day Sabbath, the weekly cycle that it's on, the one of the Shabbats that scripture is talking about, this is when he was resurrected. We also have confirmation of this in Mathoth Yahu or Matthew chapter 27 with the guards who guarded the tomb of Yahusha who said that they would guard for three days. And we know too that on the Shabbat that he was resurrected, this is just hours before the first fruits because he is our first fruits. He was resurrected to become the first fruits because the next day, which is the 19th, is first fruits right after this. And notice how all of this also agrees with the Enoch calendar too, because the Enoch calendar has the 118 or the 18th day of Abib also being a regular Shabbat and Sabbath with the 19th following it being first fruits. So as a quick review and a quick summary of this, and prayerfully this is making more sense, the chronology and the order of this, but to go over this once again, on the 14th of Abib, or the 14th, which is Passover, known as 114, we know that Yahusha became our Passover lamb because he died on the Passover, was then buried, and during his burial the next day, which was considered a high Sabbath, or the first day of unleavened bread, which no servile work is to be done on this is starts the and commences the first day that Yahusha was in the tomb for three days so we see the three days and the three nights being fulfilled on the 15th the 16th and the 17th day of Abib or the first three days of unleavened bread and then the 18th the fourth day of unleavened bread which is the regular weekly Shabbat because remember as we just established on one of the Shabbats Maryam and Maryam Magdalene they came to the tomb so there were two Shabbats observed this is the second Shabbat which is the regular weekly seventh day Shabbat that was observed and this was the Shabbat that Yahusha was 
resurrected from the dead. And early that morning, early that morning on the Sabbath, on the Shabbat, is when Maryam and Maria Magdalene came to go visit the tomb on this Shabbat. They did not go on the first day of the week. They came on the regular Shabbat, the regular weekly Shabbat. And then we know that Yahusha was resurrected just hours before first fruits of the wave sheep offering, which overlaps unleavened bread, to become our first fruits and to fulfill first fruits because we know he came to to fulfill the law. He came to fulfill the spring feast because he died on Passover to become our Passover lamb, our perfect Passover offering, atonement lamb offering, and then he was buried during unleavened bread and resurrected on the Sabbath to become our first fruits. And as it's commonly known, Good Friday to Resurrection Sunday does not amount to three days and three nights. Our Messiah Yahusha was nailed to a stake, star rose, and then hung on a tree on Passover as our Passover lamb to fulfill the scriptures. So prayerfully, this gives you a better understanding of the timeline and everything, and prayerfully, this gives you a more accurate chronology of the Messiah's resurrection and how he resurrected on Sabbath, and it agrees with Scripture. It agrees with the Enoch calendar, as we've even talked about in our Enoch video. It agrees all together, and it agrees completely. And like we just talked about too, how there were two Shabbats this week and not one, because they like to try to make you think that, oh, well, it was just one Sabbath and then he was resurrected afterwards, or oh, that he died on a F and then was resurrected on Sunday. But no, we know that's not true either. When we actually look at it and it fulfills the three days and the three nights, we see more accurately, a more accurate restored timeline of this. And like I said, prayerfully, this makes more sense. Prayerfully, this answers more of your questions. If you would like to pause the video, please do. I'll be sure to leave some scriptural references also, just like the ones here. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or even recommendations on the scriptures, and if you would like more understanding, or if you just have any questions for me, please feel free to email me at truthunveiled77 at gmail.com. Again, my email is just truthunveiled 7727s not three at gmail.com. Also, if you have any questions regarding scriptures, and if you would like a recommendation of what scriptures that I use and the scriptures that I recommend, also email me at truthunveiled77 at gmail.com and make sure to put scriptures in the title of the email. If you have any questions about anything else, please be sure to email me. Prayerfully, this lesson was very helpful unto you. This is Truth Unveiled here saying shalom.